Hello, and thank you for attending today's webinar on louver Selection and Specification 101, presented by Ruskin product experts Tiffany Wright and James Livingston. The webinar will be approximately 45 minutes long, followed by a Q&A session. If you have any questions during the webinar, please use the box with the question mark in the upper right corner of your screen to submit them. All questions will remain anonymous and will only be seen by the presenter. If we do not get to all questions, we will send out the answers in an email after this presentation. At the conclusion of today's webinar, you will receive a certificate of attendance, a link to the recording of this presentation, and the registration link for next week's webinar on Life Safety Damper Installations Part 1 with Ruskin experts Kent Mowney and Spencer Brinkmeyer. Thank you again for attending, and I will now turn it over to Tiffany to begin the presentation. Thank you, Emma. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Louver and Specification Selection 101. My name is Tiffany Wright. I'm the inside sales lead for the Louver and Architectural Sales Department. I've been with Ruskin for a little over, for almost 10 years, and I've been in the Louver department all except one of those years. I'm really excited to talk to you all today, so feel free to um, submit any questions and we'll go ahead and get started. Today, we want to help you understand these objectives. First, we want to give you a understanding of still air versus wind-driven rain louver applications and the methods with which they're installed. We're also going to look into specialty louver applications such as hurricane louvers, equipment screens, and penthouses. And we're going to look at utilizing our leads program to correctly select and size products. Once I complete that portion, I'm going to turn it over to James, who's going to help you with interpreting specifications, schedules, drawings to produce an accurate and effective submittal. In today's era of sustainable buildings, there's a growing need to supply buildings with fresh outdoor air. That means the need to protect, to protect outdoor air and building exhaust openings with louvers will continue to flourish. But what is a louver? In layman's terms, it's a framed opening in a wall or ceiling fitted with one or more fixed or movable blades to allow air to flow in and out while keeping out rain and sunlight. Louvers are used in buildings wherever there's a need for creating resistance to rainwater, excessive noise, hurricane type winds, or a combination of these problems, while also ensuring proper airflow. However, louvers may have many uses for both engineers and architects. They can also be used as a simple yet effective screening solution for buildings to hide unsightly equipment or to provide an aesthetically pleasing yet economical design element to the facade. Louvers can be utilized in a range of performance types, including drainable, non-drainable, wind-driven rain resistant, combination, thin line, acoustically rated, adjustable, and even extreme weather resistant. When buying a louver system, Make sure you have a clear understanding of the purpose of the louvers and how the louvers work so you can be sure that you are purchasing the right louver design for your needs. Now, the use of louvers can vary from building to building depending on its design and capacity. For example, a parking garage might require good airflow, but it may not need maximum protection from the rain, so a conventional louver design would be more than enough. On the other hand, a generator or plant room that contains electrical equipment may require foolproof protection from storm, storms and hurricanes as well as high performance airflow specs. The number, size, and design of the blades depends on the type of ventilation and protection you require from the louver. Each blade has a unique configuration, allowing for different things to pass through it. For example, a wind driven rain louver may allow air through, but not rain, or in some cases, debris. Additionally, there are several things to consider when selecting an architectural louver system for your building. Let's look at some of these key terms that you want to consider when selecting a louver model. The first is AMCA, or the Air Movement and Control Association. This is an international non-for-profit organization that sets standards for manufacturers of fans, dampers, louvers, air curtains, and other air system components for commercial HVAC, industrial process, and power generation applications. This is an industry certification, so it's not just Ruskin that uses these, but it's an independent third party that confirms that all of our models perform in the way in which they're published. 
The next thing we're going to look at is free area. The free area of a louver is a way of describing how well air can travel through the through for the purposes of natural ventilation. For every louver, no matter what size, it has a calculated free area. So by subtracting any obstructions to airflow, which include the frames and the blades, as well as any other media you put behind it, like a bird screen or filter racks, by, by deducting that, subtracting that amount from the overall opening size, we get the net result, which is your free area. The typical size for a louver comparison is 48 inches by 48 in wide by 48 inches high, which is an industry standard. A high percentage free area is great because it allows for more air to enter via a smaller opening, thus reducing the expenses involved in opening up the wall and installing louvers. And typically free areas are going to range anywhere from 35 to 60 percent for a wall opening. Then there's water penetration. The beginning point of water penetration is where the louver system allows water to pass through it. It's a measurement of free area velocity that tells us the threshold at which the louver is going to start leaking. For traditional louver designs, this varies from 300 feet per minute to 1250 feet per minute, which with the latter denoting an excellent resistance to air to water entrainment. Now, there's often been a industry standard that if, if something goes over 500 feet per minute, then it's no good. This is an outdated concept as louvers have evolved, so has the amount of performance that they provide. So to say 500 feet per minute um, is the highest you want to go, keep in mind that there are models that can go substantially over this um, criteria and still meet your specifications. And then there's pressure drop. Every louver is going to create wind resistance based on its design, as well as the shape of its frame and blades and anything that obstructs the airstream creates resistance. This includes your, your ductwork, filters, coils, and the building structure itself. The louver's resistance is measured by running air through it and then calculating the pressure differential and free area velocities. It's essential to minimize this resistance where possible because it can be harmful to the louver and other air movement equipment. So if, for instance, if you have a fan behind a louver, it's vital to ensure low energy consumption as the lower the, the, the lower the pressure, the less power will be required to operate that fan. And then finally, there's wind load, which is probably one of the most important aspects that you want to consider when looking at a louver. The term wind load is used to refer to any pressures or forces that wind exerts on a building or a structure. Different areas or locations will have different design lo wind load requirements, depending on the basic wind speed of the area and the size and shape of the building as well. Keep in mind that Ruskin's standard wind load is 20 pounds per square foot, but we can build to any requirement and provide additional support to the louver to ensure that it meets those requirements. Now let's look at the louver material that louvers are available in. The most popular and probably the most readily available is extruded aluminum. And this is what most is most common for um, all louver specifications. Um, in this case, aluminum is actually pushed through a die, kind of like when you were a kid and used to play with Play-Doh and push it through the extrusion to, perform, to form all these different shapes. This allows us to have more options with shapes and customizations for aluminum that we don't have available with steel. Now with formed steel, meaning galvanized or 304 and 316 stainless steel, it's actually shaped from coil or sheet. And you can see there where it goes through a roll former in order to create the shapes that's a, that are available. Because there are such limitations with this roll forming, we're unable to provide the expanse of shapes that are available in the aluminum. Now steel is going to be the most economical option as it runs about 60% of the cost of aluminum, but you're going to have fewer louver models, you're going to have longer lead times because it takes longer to form them, and there are fewer um, or lesser opportunities for warranties as aluminum can carry a much higher warranty than the steel. Now, knowing more about how louver components are made allow you to make better recommendations. 
So let's take a look at some of the louver styles that are available to you. Still air stationary louvers are commonly seen in applications that require intake and exhaust ventilation. Of all the louver subcategories, stationary louvers are the most common ones used and have the largest breadth of models. Conventional stationary blade louvers off offer considerable design flexibility and good protection from rain infiltration when applied properly in ambient conditions. However, these lend little protection against wind-driven rain. Conventional stationary louvers offer high free area and low airflow resistance and are generally the most economical options. Non-drainable models are commonly sought after for projects with an emphasis on architectural aesthetics because they provide a continuous appearance with hidden vertical blade supports at the mullions. On the other hand, drainable blade models have visible mullions, but that allows them to perform better in guiding moisture away from the area behind the louver. In the architectural community, a significant portion of louvers are installed within curtain wall openings. To streamline the installation process, Ruskin can design our louvers to mate with a given curtain wall using glazing frames that fit each specific system. Glazing frame louvers are designed to easily be installed into a glazed opening. The glazing frame is either welded or mechanically fastened onto the louver, and the louver is installed directly into the glazing frame to ensure that the integrity and performance of the facade is not compromised. Still air safety louvers have both aluminum and steel designs. They're only available in horizontal blades. They're going to have high blade spacing, which means higher free area and lower pressure drop. And again, they're generally the most economical models. The most popular models that Ruskin offers are our ELF 375X and DX, our 6-inch ELF 6375X and DX, and our, e and our 6 inch ELS 6350 DMP. While all of these models offer excellent performance for their, for their louver class, the ELF 6350 DMP offers the best performance in the industry. Not only does it have 62% free area in its tested size, but it also maxes out at 1250 feet per minute for the free area velocity. No other louver in the industry meets both of these requirements. So this is going to be the most expensive of the two, which is of, of the group, which is going to have the higher performance. The ELF 375X and DX and the ELF 6375X and DX also offer great performance, but they're going to give you the best economy. But what if you need a louver that offers the absolute best water protection? Wind-driven rain louvers are the right choice for minimization of water infiltration regardless of the application. These products are designed to raise the level of performance in today's marketplace beyond standard louvers for the severest of inclement conditions. Wind-driven rain louvers protect your building and property from water damage. And these high-performance louvers prevent water penetration through your wall openings while allowing high airflow rates. You want to use these assemblies when you need up to 99.9% .9 resistance to wind-driven rain and expect winds as high as 50 miles per hour that drive 8 inches of water per hour. These are used for any applications where you have a dry room behind the louver or equipment that you don't want exposed to moisture. Now, wind-driven rain louvers are only available in aluminum. And as we discussed, that's because we're unable to form such sophisticated blade profiles in steel but they are available in both horizontal and vertical configurations. They're going to have closer blade spacing, which means they're typically not going to have the higher free areas that the standard stationary louvers have, but they're also going to offer the optimal water performance. Our top sellers for Ed Ruskin in the wind driven rain classification are our 5 inch EME 520DD, our EME or our 2 inch EME 220DD, which is the best in class for all thin line louvers, our 7 inch EME 720, and then our vertical 6 inch EME 6625. Now, of all of those options, the, the 520 DD and the 220 DD typically sell the most, but they're going to have, again, free areas that are lower than, than most models. They're going to cap out probably at 47% um, free area for the 5 inch. 
but the EME 720 kind of stands out in the industry and in that it offers up to 56% free area, which most horse, which most wind and rain louvers cannot offer. So it really stands out for that um, application. Now let's look at an, still another type of louver that has a more specialized function. Acoustical, acoustical louvers are designed to provide the maximum noise reduction obtainable while still giving an effective combination of privacy and weather protection when space is limited. These models utilize louver, louver blades with a sound absorbent material to reduce infiltrating or escaping noise levels. They're made of aluminum or steel and come in a variety of blade styles such as box blades and airfoils. Models are available in varying depths and percent open free area, yielding various pressure loss and noise reduction performance. And they're commonly seen in office buildings, condominiums, and public buildings, and are often specified when sound attenuators can't be installed. So essentially, anywhere where you want to minimize the amount of noise that's going on in a particular building, maybe they have some noisy equipment at the roof or at um, ground level, this is the application that you want to use. Now, acoustical louver, louver blades have a large surface area, so they're typically not going to have very high free area. The frame and blades are not drainable, so while they will provide you some protection, they're not designed for optimal water penetration. But in terms of sound attenuation, these are gonna be your best bet. Now that we've talked a little bit about some of the types of louvers that Ruskin offers, what about how they're going to be installed? Here you see one of the most basic installations that we offer, which is probably going to apply to 80 to 90% of your applications. Here you see two single section louvers and how they're going to be installed. One of them does not have any blade support and the other has a hidden vertical blade support that's used to accommodate either, <coughs> excuse me, either its size or its wind load. Typically what you'll use is a two inch by two inch by quarter inch thick by two inch long clip angle. That's gonna be mounted four inches from the ends of your louver and then a maximum of 24 inches on center for the remaining assemblies. Now keep in mind, the HVS is, could be different for your application. Um, based on the size and wind load of your application, you can have flat strap, um, HVBS, angles, channels, or even tubes if it's a higher wind load or an extremely large assembly. But installation is going to be very similar for each of them. Now the clip angles are available at Ruskin, but they are an optional feature for all of our standard stationary louvers. So it's very important to make sure that if you want Ruskin to provide these, to make sure you order them on, on, on your jobs so that they can be provided and sent out. And we'll send you exactly the number that you need for your application. Now these show this the single section installation, but let's jump over to Ruskin's YouTube channel and check out one of our installation videos for a multi-section assembly. I'm not sure if the sound is coming through, but here you can see is an isometric view of a louver installation. It's going to be two sections wide, which is there. It's going to show them going to be installed into the opening. Now, a lot of people think that you actually need to attach these two, two sections together. That's not always the case. If needed, which is typically for operable and um, and um, combination louvers, there may be splice plates involved, but here you would just screw, provide screws to connect the two louvers together in the opening. But what is key is how they're actually installed into the structure and how they're attached to your wall opening. Here you'll see the clip angle similar to the previous details that we looked at going into the structure.
Now Ruskin will provide all hardware that actually installs directly into the louver itself. So if you if you order clip angles with your installation, we're going to provide you with the fasteners to actually attach to the louver. But anything that anchors into the structure itself is going to be provided by others. So that will be something that you will need to or your customer would need to provide. Now, in the end here, once you've tightened all this, all the screws associated with the clip angles and into the and your anchors, then it's going to show you a view from the front where you're actually going to be do providing um, back a rod and caulking to actually finish the installation of the louver. This part is not um, provided by Ruskin, and it is absolutely imperative that you do it to ensure that the installation is as watertight as possible. Now you can view, view this as well as other installation videos um, on Ruskin's YouTube channel. So feel free to log in at any time to view them and take a look at what we have going, what we have for your viewing. You can also pass these on to your installers for a different view of, of how to install. Now starting October 1st of 2020, which is just Right, right around the bend, you will actually have access to brand new comprehensive installation guides by louver type at www.ruskin.com. From stationary to acoustical to operable louvers and beyond, detailed instructions are available to you and your customers with just the click of a mouse. And you can see some of the um, options that you're going to have available to choose, for, choose from and how detailed those instructions are going to be. So you never have to worry about whether you're actually installing the louver as is recommended and in that's going to be stable enough to install into your openings. We're really excited about that. We're going to look at also at some some specialty louvers and when I say specialty louvers are not special in the fact that we're reinventing the wheel every time we create a model. One of the great things about Ruskin is that we try to take some of our base offering and figure out if there's a way that we can give it a different function by making some alterations. So we modify standard louvers to create high performance assemblies. This is how we get our hurricane rated models. There you're looking at a blast um, test that is done on one of our blast resistant louvers. Now we don't have any one blast louver that is certified to be blast. What we do is we certify our engineers so that we can take our base, pretty much any of our base models and alter the frame, alter the reinforcement, and give it blast resistant tendencies. So that's how Ruskin has enabled, has been enabled to provide alterations for our, our base models and make them blast resistant. We also have our snowstopper there at the bottom right. Essentially what we did, we took our base ELF375DX, installed it in a sleeve with an air straightener and a heat trace, and we have a brand new application that's gonna melt snow before it gets on the inside of your building. We also offer sand resistant louvers and shape louvers, as you can see by the star at the bottom, which is probably making some Dallas Cowboys fan very, very happy in their in their home or in their building. Now, one thing to keep in mind that when we do have our shape louvers, any louver that you use that was previously AMCA certified is no longer certified once we start um, changing the frame because there's no way for a, the, the frame to be drainable. So keep that in mind whenever you're making your application. You can make them look really pretty like that, but they're not always going to be guaranteed to have the same function as they would as if they were square or rectangle. Our hurricane louvers are also um, a special application that we're going to discuss here on the next slide. In the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew, which ripped through Florida and Louisiana in August of 1992, leaving an estimated of $26.5 billion in damages, stricter building codes were created in the state of Florida. The governor at the time established the Florida Building Code Study Commission for the purpose of assessing the building codes at the time, as well as enacting improvements and reform to the system. 
1998, the Florida Building Code was established and it was eventually put into effect by 2002. It phased out all local laws and regulations and replaced them with universal statewide building codes. On the other side, the Miami-Dade um, Commission issued a notice of acceptance or NOA is specific to high velocity hurricane zones. So you may not have these have um, need these at Disney World in Orlando, but when you're looking at those coastal areas in Miami and um, like Miami, this is where you're gonna see a different kind of coding required. The Miami-Dade County norms often considered the most stringent requirements for hurricane louvers rely on self-developed testing me methods that include high velocity wind driven rain, large missile impact, uniform static air pressure, and cyclic wind pressure performance. When and only when a product has successfully passed all of these testing standards can it bear the Miami-Dade NOA certification seal. All Florida Building Code and Miami-Dade products must display their approval numbers on their product literature. If it does not have the number, then it's not certified. In most cases, the certification is determined by how the louvers are installed based on the wall type and the wall depth, and it legally only applies in, in Florida. However, as Mother Nature has a sense of humor, we know that hurricanes are not confined just to the state of Florida. Recent years have shown us that the Gulf and Atlantic coasts are also susceptible to this extreme weather. So there are additional codes that may apply in those regions. Those would include AMCA 540 and AMCA 550. The scope of the AMCA 540 standard is for large missile impact testing of louvers used on the outside of buildings as required by the ICC International Bu Building Code. Typically, it's not as difficult to get this rating as a closer space blade typically um, can get this rating. What is a little bit more difficult is AMCA 550. Now, this is a standard that establishes uniform laboratory test methods and minimum performance ratings for water rejection capabilities of louvers intended to be used in high velocity wind conditions. It simulates external wind speeds of up to 110 miles per hour with an external rainfall of eight inches per hour. To pass AMCA 550, no more than 1% of the total sprayed water volume can penetrate that louver. Now, most horizontal louvers can't meet this test standard on their own. However, when they're paired with a damper, in Ruskin's case, either a CD40, a CD50, or an SD60, some louvers can actually meet both AMCA 540 and AMCA 550 certification. On the next slide, we're going to look at the FEMA 361. Now, like the Miami-Dade and AMCO 540 and 550 installations, FEMA 361 is designed for severe weather conditions. Here, the guidance for FEMA 361 is intended for architects, engineers, building officials, local officials, emergency managers, and prospective safe room owners and operators. It was first published in, in the year 2000 with a second edition releasing in 2008. Now, after the second edition was published, several significant tornado, tornado events occurred, most notably the EF5 tornadoes in Joplin, Missouri and in Moore, Oklahoma, which resulted in more than 170 deaths and almost $5 billion in damages. As a result, considerable research was conducted and the International Council Code, a Code Council or ICC, released a consensus standard to codify the design and construction requirements of extreme wind storm shelters. The XP500 was the industry's first heavy duty aluminum louver designed to protect exterior wall openings against severe circumstances for FEMA 361 compliant safe rooms and storm shelters. It is also ICC 500 certified for large missile impact. Now our newer model, the XP500 WD wind driven rain FEMA louver is the first louver to provide both FEMA impact protection plus Class A wind driven rain protection that is AMCA certified. The result is a, louver, is a FEMA louver that gives designers and builders one product that does the work of two. 
And this louver um, performs at up to 300 pounds per square foot wind load. And when you think about the fact that our base louvers perform at 20 pounds per square foot as a minimum, you can see how just how durable um, these louvers are and how much power it's going to take to actually um, dislodge them from their openings. Let's take a look at a different liver application, our penthouses. Penthouses typically consist of four louvers that are joined together with a roof and they're mounted on a curb. They allow the transfer of air through roof openings while protecting the opening from the weather elements. Now, just about any louver can be made into a penthouse. Both drainable and non-drainable blade styles will work for the box corner applications. However, we highly recommend using only non-drainable louver blade styles for mitered applications. The reason for this is that drainable louvers can't drain water properly at mitered corners. So you could possibly be compromising your performance by trying to use a drainable design for a mitered application. Now, Ruskin factory assembles penthouse configurations up to 60 inches by 60 inches, but any assembly that exceeds those dimensions will require some field assembling. Now, in addition to our standard PHB and PHM models, Ruskin also offers hurricane rated models. Those are our PHB 637HDXD and our vertical blade configuration PHB 6625D, which are both NOA certified applications. Now, louvers can also be used as architectural vision barriers. Equipment screens are designed to hide unwanted views and increase security of mechanical systems, HVAC equipment, trash enclosures, parking garages, and other applications. They're essentially a louver without the frame. Now, because they are louver, louvered screens, they actually achieve these goals while still allowing airflow to the systems or areas they hide and reduce the wind loads imposed on any structural framing. Now, now we get it. You want products that are easy to install and not only make your job less frustrating, but help you to actually make a profit. I mean, the last thing you need is to be struggling with lots of parts and hardware at the job site, trying to figure out what goes where. Now, this is what we see with a lot of competitors who offer what may seem like the absolute best pricing for their configurations, but they're going to give you an IKEA box full of parts and let you figure it out. You definitely want to be aware of those knockdown configurations. So with that in mind, Ruskin offers factory assembled ship sections that allow for easier installation. We've done all the homework, tested out all the methods, and perfected the art of installing equipment screens so that you don't have to. Now, if you follow our procedures and obviously provide us with the correct um, field conditions, you'll be amazed at how easy and fast the equipment screens go up. And you can also feel good about the installation knowing it's been engineered properly for the wind loads. So definitely be aware of those competitor prices and in really you know ask questions about what you're actually going to get now with all of the louver options that are available for your building specifications sometimes it's still hard to know which one you're supposed to choose so ruskin has an application on its website that's going to offer you further assistance this is our leads program it stands for louver engineering and architectural design system it's an industry first in terms of louver selection, rapid model comparison, providing size specific pressure drop and free area information that you're not gonna find on the product data submittal sheet. And it also offers you relative costs. And it's all based on the criteria that you enter into the program. Next slide. One of the first options that you have is how to select a louver. So let's say you have a spec, you know what size you need, you know what the amount of airflow is, but you're not necessarily sure what model that you want to use for that. You can go on to Ruskin's Leads program and go to the performance selection section, choose the category of louver you want from the drop down menu. In this case, we're looking for stationary louvers. I know I need a 60 by 48 assembly that needs to pass 3000 CFM of intake air. 
And by simply clicking on the plus signs next to a model, you can find out exactly how that louver is going to perform. So our ELS 6375DX in this condition, in this situation, is going to offer 11.45 square feet of free area or 57% free area with a free area velocity of 262 feet per minute and 0.01 inches water gauge of pressure drop, which is significantly below what that, that lure is actually capable of doing. Now the program also offers you the option to size a louver. So maybe you know what louver that you want and you know what the field conditions are supposed to be, but you don't know exactly what size the louver is gonna work for your application. So here you can use similar design. We're gonna choose that same stationary type louver, but we don't know how wide it's gonna be, but we know it can't be any more than four feet tall. So with 5,000 CFM of intake air and no more than 0.1 inches water gauge of pressure drop, you put that information into the edge, into the leads program, and it'll tell you exactly how wide that louver needs to be in order to meet that criteria. And what's really great is you'll notice there on the far right column is a cost index. So it's going to break it down by price for you. So it'll let you know what is the most economical option to go with and the most expensive option. But either way it goes, it's going to let you know exactly what you need and exactly what your options are. And one of the great things about the LEADS program is that you can put every single louver in your job into this program and it will build a schedule for you. So if you have 50 louvers sizes on your, your job, you can create the schedule, print it out, give it to your engineer and let them know exactly how each of their louvers is going to perform on their job. And this is available to the public, so anyone can go in here and play with it. So definitely take a look at that and see how that can help you out. Now we've discussed a whole lot of information about louver applications, louver installation, how to select them. Um, so that concludes my portion of the presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to James, and he's going to talk to you about how to drive your specifications. James? All right. Thank you, Tiff. Tiffany, yes, my name is James Livingston. I'm Ruskin's Central Regional Sales Manager. I've been with Ruskin for over 31 years, uh, 21 of that working in uh, the Louver product line, and then the last 10 years in regional sales uh, working with all products. So we've seen a great review of Louver products and features in the last few minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm spend a little bit of time on Louver specs. Now to start with, my goal here is not to show you how to lay out a louver spec. There are plenty of louver guide specs out there um, that you can download that are already written for you. Uh, we have them ourselves on our website and they're easy to download and use. So, uh, and most other companies that make louvers have them as well. <clears throat> they're all, they have all the info that you need in them generally and formatted the right way. Um, and so they're great uh, tools for you to use. What I'm gonna look at here with you uh, in these next few slides are some ideas that can help you tailor your specs to your job when you need to and ensure the process of bidding goes well for your project. So the first thing to, to uh, think about here when putting together a louver spec is the function of the louver. Define that clearly and you, you might be amazed by how many uh, or of the number of projects where we see where the spec and the schedule and the plans don't match and you get a lot of different things. You get a lot of different styles of louvers bid. So some things to think about in this in this way. Um, is it stationary or does or does the louver need to be able to close? There are both kinds. Um, do you wish the louver to stop wind driven rain or will a standard louver work? Uh, does the louver have an aesthetic role in the building or is it purely for airflow? Those are just a few of the things that you can consider that will might point you to the right louver to spec. Who creates or controls the louver spec? Much of the time, louver specified in the 89,000 spec section are jointly um, managed by the mechanical and the architect on a project, whereas 23 division louvers are typically mechanical. The key here is coordination. If both sides are involved um, and they're gonna be, and they could possibly cross over, and we see this often where jobs um, where you're bidding some architectural, some mechanical in the same bid, 
it's important to coordinate that so that everything matches. Uh, we sometimes see very conflicting re requirements in the projects and um, that off almost always results in delays and poor, poor bids. When it comes to what company and product you specify, consider the ease of working with them. Uh, for example, who have you worked with before and how did it go? Um, to consider the quality of the products and the offering, the breadth of offering. Do they have a wide variety of products for every type of use? Uh, support, that's key. Most of us that make louvers have local sales reps that can assist in product selection um, and even provide in-house or uh, uh, set up for virtual product training uh, to help you learn the products better. Uh, they can also help you if there's a problem in the field uh, once your products have arrived, they can help you resolve those in a, in a time, timely manner. Companies that do not have local reps can take a lot longer, can be a lot harder to get anything done with those guys. So use your local reps whenever you can. And of course, websites. Websites have a wealth of info. They have product data, specs, drawings, and also software. And we saw our software a little while ago. <laughs> Tiff, uh, Tiffany went through the Leeds program. That's our louver sizing and selection program. We have that um, creates schedules and sizes and selects louvers. But a lot of us that have that make louvers have the same type of software. So use that to make your job easier. And lastly, the type of spec that is on your project can affect the quality and the price of what you get on the job. For example, a basis of design spec is often the easiest and fastest to use because there's so many of them out there, but it may limit you uh, to certain products um, because of the performance that's listed in it. Performance-based specs, which we'll look at, um, will require some coordination and maybe a little bit more work up front, but may also provide more opportunities for bidding and overall lower cost on, on the job. Um, we're going to look at a couple specs here. The first one we're going to look at is a basis of design spec. Now, this one had 19 approved companies listed in it, which is a, not normal. It's a bit unusual. And I've cut out most of them simply in the interest of space. I just didn't have enough room in the slide to put them all in there. But um, there's a lot, there were a lot of them there. It's a good spec. And most of the important uh, criteria is called out. It calls out the style of louver, the louver depth, uh, the frame and blade gauges, mullion types, performance ratings, and AMCA rating. Um, all that is important and does a good job of calling all those out. This is typical of a, of a guide spec that I mentioned in the previous slide that companies like us offer for their products. And the performance values that we list in them are specific to that particular model. Uh, we have these on Ruskin.com. You just go to any of our Louvers web pages and you'll find them there that are ready to download. We call them uh, three-part specs. Um, in these specs, the performance values are straight from the AMCA tests for that model. And they provide a general benchmark for performance, but they might be overkill for the actual needs of the jobs. And it's difficult to tell from the spec if an, if an alternate that is submitted is, uh, that you can, is able to be used. So this style of spec meets the needs of many jobs and inappropri appropriate for use in most cases. But just know that it may narrow the field of products bid, particularly if the model has few or no equals in the market, and that usually drives the louver cost up. To explain this point a little further, let's look at the performance part of this spec a little deeper. Since the performance is unique to one model, um, when alternates are submitted, they will differ from the spec. So, you may, know, you may wonder, well, will these work? So some, quest some questions you have to ask yourself in that case. What, number one, what is the real airflow requirement of the job? Is it really designed uh, to handle 963 feet per minute free area velocity? Probably not. The louvers are probably, this type of louver at least, a drainable blade louver, probably gonna be designed to handle anywhere from 500 to 750 feet per minute free area velocity. And there is no advantage to significantly higher beginning point of water ratings in standard uh, in standard louvers. This is from the still air test and has no indication of a louver's resistance to wind-driven rain. 
Also, what is the pressure drop that is allowable at the design airflow? Generally, we find 0.1 to 0.15 inches water gauge will work, um, but sometimes uh, that will vary, so find that out. All these things can help you uh, uh, see if the alternate louver will work. Often a louver that does not initially look like it will work due to a free area or some other performance is perfectly fine for the actual job after you review it. Um, you could look at it as a CFM per square foot basis or simply use software to plug in sizes and air flows. And again, coordination with mechanical um, will help you with this. Here we have an example of a spec that's not written around a specific model. Rather than using performance unique to a particular model, it uses rounded numbers values based on the actual requirements of the job. These numbers are easier to review and frankly, they're easier to type into software to compare to other models. Uh, also note that the pressure drop is 0.1 inches at 750 feet per minute free area velocity. Um, this is most likely what the actual design airflow is for the job. Now understand this spec is no less demanding performance wise than the previous spec we just looked at. It's a strong spec and it will only allow good products to be used, but it's laid out in a way that's easier to analyze and less daunting for those who are bidding the job. So if you're typically using guide specs specific to models, this type of spec requires some addi additional legwork up front, but could result in a more competitive bid and reduce your overall costs. Lastly, I want to touch on wind-driven rain louver specs. Now, wind-driven rain louvers are the best improvement or the biggest improvement in louvers probably in the last 40 years. Uh, they really do work and they reduce um, the amount of rain that will blow into your building. Um, and they should be used as much as they can. But they do introduce a few things um, in terms of the specs that you have to keep in mind and make sure they're in there. The first thing is the blades, vertical or horizontal. There are both styles out there. Um, horizontal louvers look more like normal louvers, uh, but the performance is generally not as good as vertical louvers. Vertical louvers have a different look. They're, we're not used to that look yet. We may be at some point, but still we're getting used to that. But because of the way the blades are, the water sheds straight down the blades and out through the front of the louver. So they're much better at keeping rain out and they generally produce less pressure drop per CFM than the other style of louvers. So they are the most efficient style, but it comes down to will they suit the aesthetic needs of your job. Mullion style, most wind driven rain louvers are visible mullion style louvers, although there are some recessed mullions and even some hidden mullion models that you can use. So uh, that can have a big impact on the appearance of the building. So choose the right one. This is also very key. Be sure to specify the class A wind driven rain rating and the corresponding intake feet per minute. This is one of the most important aspects of these louvers, but believe it or not, sometimes it's left out of specs. Um, so you, you need to specify that and you also should specify of what level of testing is needed. Um, the standard level of the 29 mile per hour wind or the higher level 50 mile per hour, both are available. Another important aspect of wind driven rain louvers in their specs are its pressure drop. Since these louvers typically have very closely spaced blades and their free area is generally a little bit less than a standard drain drainable blade louver, pressure drop may be a limiting factor or the factor you use to size them by. Now there can be massive differences in pressure drops between companies with models that are very similar. One five inch deep horizontal blade louver might offer 0.15 pressure drop at 1000. Somebody else's that looks identical might be 0.30. So it's a huge swing from model to model. So it's important that you specify what the maximum is that the system is designed around. And lastly, uh, many wind driven rain louvers are used in coastal regions of the US that also require hurricane ratings, um, such as impact resistance, 
and or high velocity wind driven rain ratings. So be sure to research what, if any, ratings that you need and include them in the spec. And you can reference the ICC codes or if you're in Florida, the Florida building code uh, for more on that. So here's an example of a wind driven rain spec. Um, pretty, pretty good spec, frame depth, mullion style, material gauges, class A rain ratings, all are called out. So the only ideas that I would add to this to make it a little bit better would to be to add a pressure drop level or maximum pressure drop at a velocity. That way we know what the maximum is and also provide the class A intake velocity uh, at as a free area velocity. Uh, it is shown in this example with core area velocity, uh, which is part of the AMCA's uh, test, but free area velocity is more widely used here in the States and um, is uh, what you see normally on projects and specs. Uh, so you can use both or just use free area velocity would be another uh, way to handle that. So to summarize these last few slides on specs, coordinate between the architect and the mechanical on the louver specs. Try to make the specs, uh, plans, and schedules all match. You'll get a better bid on the job and better products out there. If you can, include the real system requirements for performance as much as you can. Um, that will help identify what really is suitable for use and what's not. Understand how alternates stack up, meaning uh, understand the relationship of free area, say, for example, to pressure drop or things of that nature. Uh, maybe a model that doesn't appear to be a match actually will work in when you look at it in thorough. Uh, specify general performance levels if you can. That's where we rounded the numbers and used numbers that were actually applicable to the actual job. Um, wind driven rain louver specs are more complex. So a few more things you have to keep in mind on those, so be sure you include all the things that you need to. And of course, utilize resources that are out there for you, like websites, data, um, uh, software, and of course, your local rep. So that's the end of my specification talk. I'm going to turn it over to Tessa for the Q&A. Thanks, James. Our Q&A session is now open. Please use the box on the upper right side of your screen to submit any questions you may have. We will respond to all questions we don't get to in an email following the conclusion of this webinar. If you have any further questions after the meeting concludes, please feel free to contact Emma Barnhart. Our first question is, how large can any given louver be fabricated? I'll take over that question, Tessa. Um, this is Tiffany again. Um, the question, the answer to that question is going to be it varies. Now, as a standard, our um, common stationary louvers are going to max out at 90 inches by 120 or 120 by 90 inches as a standard for most. Um, now, that is for any one single ship section. Now, you can have a louver as big or small as you want it, as long as it meets the minimum requirements, which are usually 12 by 12 but it's just a matter of how many sections or is it going to come in. Um, now, that's for our ELF, our EME louvers, that tip, those size restrictions typically apply. Now, an acoustical louver, as I mentioned, has those broader blades, so they're not gonna span as far. Um, so I think those, for the most part, max out some of them at 48 inches. But if you take a look at the online product data submittal for the louver that you wanna specify, there is a section that says maximum ship section size, so it'll let you know exactly what's required for that particular model. All right, thanks, Tiffany. So our second question is, manufacturers have several different models of the style of louver. How can I determine the best one to use? All right, Tessa, I'll take that, that one. Um, using software, uh, use the software out there available to you. It will help you out a lot. Usually, these uh, the software will narrow down the louver selections to certain styles and depths of louvers and will tell you the sizes that you need in each of those different models to handle the specific air, air flows. 
And some of them, like leads, will even tell you a give you a basic idea of the cost variance from one model to the next. So these are very help. help these are very helpful tools for that. Right. Thanks, James. Our next question is, how do we calculate wind load and how do we know how that affects the louver configuration? OK, that'll, that'll come back to me. Um, as I mentioned, our standard wind load is 20 pounds per square foot, but we can provide any required wind load. And it's very, 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 very important for you to know what your wind load requirements are. A lot of times we get requests saying, hey, what's the wind load for 120 miles per hour? Well, that's the air velocity, and that is a component that we need to determine your wind load, but it's not the only thing that we need. Um, typically, there's two things that we need to calculate your wind load. Um, we need to, your structural notes, which is an S1 drawing, um, which basically has a de the des design criteria that shows your ultimate wind speed, your exposure category, sometimes your importance factor. We need that information. And then we also need your architectural elevations that show the height of the building and where your louvers are positioned on the building because clearly a louver that's towards closer to your roof is going to have higher wind load than the, the louvers that are at ground level so if we get this information then we can calculate your wind load and we can let you know what that means to your louver configuration does that mean your your four inch louver you thought you're getting is going to be 10 inches because it has a six inch deep um, blade support on the back, we can let you know that, but it's very, very, very important to know that before you order something so that A, we can provide it, and so that if you if you just order something for standard 20 PSF and it needs something higher, we don't want to endanger anyone that may be around your building if in your all of that louver comes out of its opening. So definitely send us that information. We can figure all that out for you. Right. All right. Thanks, Tiffany. So it looks like we have time for one more question. And that is, I often get submittals on projects for louvers that don't appear to meet the specified performance. However, they might meet the actual performance requirements of the project. How can I tell? All right, Tess, I'll take that, that one. Um, the first thing you do is you find out how much actual airflow that is intended to be moved through the louvers volume, for example, and then you can request the supplier that submitted the alternate louver to provide a performance schedule of the louver uh, in the sizes with those air flows and that um, that will in that will include free area velocity and pressure drop and uh, with that you will be able to tell whether that louver that alternate louver will work right all right thanks james so that's all the time we have for questions and we thank you for attending today's webinar we will be sending out an email after the meeting concludes with responses to questions, certificates of attendance, and a link to next week's webinar re registration. That being said, please join us next week on September 30th at 1 p.m. Central Time for our discussion on life safety dampers. Thank you again for attending and we hope you all have a wonderful day.